Hey y'all, been a while. Hope summer's treating you all right. I've been talking about this for what seems like a year, probably because it has been a year. Here's another way we're committed to making the table stakes features of Fusion 360 best in class. Drawings has another update that introduces a newly revitalized break view system that translates to projected views. Use the same way you always have, but now, when you do, any projected views, they'll also show the break lines. As for the other update, this one's amazing. First, a good drawing in industry is like staring at the Mona Lisa. It's captivating, slightly off-putting because you like it so much, and in the end, soothing because, well, it's nice. Now with dimensions and drawings, we've launched an arrange feature that allows you to align dimensions in several ways. Once you made your dimensions, navigate to the dimensions dropdown. Here you'll see arrange dimensions. In it, you'll have two options. The first is aligning to one another, the next is spacing meaning you can set a desired space for stacked dimensions. Other improvements to the drawing space are additional units of measure for dimensions like feet, meter, and centimeter, fractional, engineering, and architectural formats. Shifting gears a bit, you'll remember we've been doing a lot of work around edit in place, which really helps to navigate large assemblies. Here, we've introduced edit in place for sheet metal. You'll be able to convert to sheet metal, do flanges, bends, unfold, refold, and edit the rules. Right now, Flat pattern isn't supported yet, but we're working on it. A couple months back, the mesh environment came out of preview. Well, as always, we're in continuing to enhance everything. Now you can select multiple bodies when tessellating, save as mesh supports OPJ, and there's been support added to the API for 3MF. All right, now for the real meat and potatoes. Personally, I don't always think we do the best job at calling out preview functionality. And this month, I said, Trent, do not forget this one. First, to get to preview features, navigate to your preferences, then at the bottom, you'll see preview features. For this, navigate to generative and turn on generative fluids by selecting fluid path. Now remember, everything in this space is stuff we're actively building, so it changes a lot. But it also gives you a peek behind the curtain to see what the old wizard is working on. To use it, start a generative study. Then when prompted, select Fluid Path. Now the thing to call out here is that this is a fluid study. So whatever you're trying to generate needs to be the interior volume of something. Check out this intake manifold. I wanna see if the form that I've got is best optimized for cubic feet per minute of air traveling through it. So I need to make the interior volume. To do that is easy. In the edit model space after making your model watertight or fully enclosed, you can select Create Fluid Volume. Select the entire model, select internal in this case, and boom, you've got the internal volume as a solid. Make some inlet and outlet features by extruding new bodies and then run through the process. First, select the features you want to keep. That's the green one. Then, if you have a starting solid, like in this case, select the bodies to keep. That's the yellow one. Then, in some cases, you may have areas you want to avoid. That's the red one. There aren't any in this study but you get the idea. Once done, move over to the design conditions. Here, I'm going to select design conditions, then fluid inlets and outlets. In this case, I'm gonna look at air flow rate. So I select flow rate, then the part where the air is entered, the top of the plenum. Now here's the tricky part. For right now, our studies are pressure reduction studies. So to select an outlet, you have to do this. Now, before you start screaming, the sky is falling. Remember, public preview means work in progress, so we're working on it. Back to the outlet. To select your outlet, select pressure, your area where the fluid is leaving, and set pressure to zero. Then, we're going to go to the design criteria. Here, we're doing minimize pressure drop, and we'll select the percentage of mass reduction from the original volumetric mass. Next up, select material. In this case, I'm doing air. Then check for errors. You can generate with warnings, but not errors. Then select generate. Once you've done your study, it's like the rest of generative, except now in the display portion, you have airflow diagrams and properties with a whole bunch of math and science displayed relating to fluid. Here's your last step, and it's the most crucial. Go to the forum, find the latest post on generative fluids and leave some feedback. That's how we get better. All right, y'all. That's it for this month. If you like finding out what's new, like and subscribe so you don't miss a beat. Have fun.